They like to roll the dice. By chance they came on Devil's Game, and gosh, they paid the price. Cuphead is a tough-as-nails run-and-gun indie game that carries with it the sensibility of 1930s Disney animation and a distinct feeling of simpatico with Nintendo games. Its existence as a Microsoft exclusive for its original 2017 release was definitely something I was jealous of as a Nintendo-focused writer and gamer. Cuphead coming to Nintendo Switch less than two years later is both mind-boggling and awesome. This beautiful and demanding game feels at home in Nintendo's library, and the port to Switch is mostly excellent, save from some controller-related melodies. At heart, this is a boss rush game. The majority of the gameplay is spread across more than a dozen battles, with a handful of side-scrolling levels and extras thrown in for good measure. I am disappointed that the focus is just on the boss battles, because the few normal levels that are there are inventive and fun, providing a really nice balance to the pressure and intensity of each of the bosses. Still, the bosses are all drawn and animated amazingly well and beautifully, featuring multiple phases, tons of tricks, and a whole lot of heart. The fights are all their own puzzle to solve, as you experiment with the best ways to fell the beasts while taking very little damage. The elegance of the hand-drawn visuals is aesthetically matched with the audio design. The music plays wonderful homage to the era of animation referenced, and the audio creates an overwhelming pitter-patter that pulls everything together. Each gun you can use has its own rhythmic firing speed and noise that, because you're very likely going to be constantly slamming on the fire button, is constant. It's a backing track to the whole beautiful tableau. While Cuphead is fully enjoyable by yourself, it is at its best in co-op. A second player can jump in and help you out with a tough boss, made slightly easier thanks to the added firepower and the ability to revive a fallen partner if you're quick enough. Even with that aid, the foes here aren't a walk in the park at all. The bosses demand competence at the very start, but with an endless supply of lives and well-defined attack patterns and phases, this isn't as unfair and difficult as I was led to believe back when it first came out in 2017. The going gets very tough, but delicately toes the line between fair and cheap. My failures generally happened when I was still learning the boss's patterns, or I got a little too cocky. Rarely was it due to unfair circumstances, though some late-game bosses painfully test this conclusion. If it is too hard for you, you can opt for the simple difficulty, which unfortunately doesn't allow you to beat the game. Simple is best used as an easy alternative to learning bosses and mechanics early on, as it removes some of the slightly random elements of the boss's patterns. The Switch version, on the whole, runs very, very well. When comparing it to the Xbox One release, the initial load times are a little bit longer, but once you get into a boss battle, respawns are very short, which they absolutely need to be because death is a common specter in this game. Also, the questionable D-pads on the Switch's controllers barely hold up the scrutiny in this game. I still enjoyed myself, but I long for the days when Nintendo's controllers had the best D-pads out there. My solution was to adapt to the analog stick for control, which wasn't ideal, but at least it was more consistent. Co-op is naturally perfect for the Switch, and now, if you so choose, Player 2 doesn't have to default to Cuphead's pal Mugman. In fact, a single player can choose to play as Mugman or Cuphead at the outset. With close to 20 bosses, Cuphead can take quite a while to finish. A lot of that depends on how good you are at these types of games. For me, it took me in the ballpark of about 10 hours to get through the story. Replay value can be found in improving your efficiency, but even if Cuphead is just a singular romp through the visually arresting world, it still triumphs. Challenge is prevalent, but with lovely visuals and sound coupled with a well-crafted, though still terse, difficulty curve, this is an adventure worth working your way through. My only real qualms are with the controllers on the Switch and some frustration found in the late game bosses. This is an absolute gem of an addition to the Switch library, and I'm so glad that it made the jump from Microsoft only. If you enjoyed our review and want to see more stuff like it, be sure to stay tuned to Nintendo World Report TV. You can also go to our website, www.nintendoworldreport.com, to read even more content. We have even more reviews up there than we have uh, in video form on the YouTube channel. You can also support us over at Patreon, patreon.com slash nwr. That uh, helps us keep the lights on and do these things. We're also over on Discord. You can join our Discord and you can talk about games and stuff and like tell us about Cuphead and what other Microsoft games you can hope would come to Switch someday. I hope that Viva Pinata comes back. That would be real cool. All right, bye guys.